Hey guys, this is Butch, and in today's story, we're going to look at what a satanic lie looks like. Is there a difference between a partial truth and a whole lie? So join us today as we look at one of the key uh, passages in all of the Bible. Hey guys, uh, welcome. I am here at Bernheim Forest, uh, right outside of Bardstown, Kentucky. It's uh, just a, a premier park here in the state. And as you can see, we are heavily into the end of fall here. Trees are starting to look bare and things are starting to look barren, uh, which is probably an appropriate pl place for this particular story. Uh, in our story, God has created man. He's created everything there is. He's placed two, gar two trees in the midst of the garden. And he told the man, uh, don't eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, there's also the tree of life, which isn't going to be important for this story, but it is going to be important for a story we'll do not too long from now. Uh, and then God created the woman from the rib of man, brought her to the man, and, and performed the first wedding uh, in the garden, which we looked at uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, we had talked earlier in another story uh, about the serpent, whether he represented something else, uh, threw some questions out there about uh, the serpent speaking and the woman not being you know, all that shocked that an animal was talking to her. And so here, let's get into our story. So the serpent asked the woman, did God really say you can't eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden? The woman said, no, we may freely eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree that's in the middle of the garden, we must not eat it nor even touch it, because if we do, we'll die. And the serpent said, you won't surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of that fruit, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the fruit was pleasant to the eyes, good to eat, and desirable to make one wise, she took of the fruit and she ate it. And she gave some to her husband who was with her, and he also ate. And the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together to make coverings for themselves. So, you know, I, I wonder what it would have been like to have been the woman and, and all of a sudden, for the very first time in your existence, uh, the goodness of God is questioned in your presence. I, I wonder emotionally, mentally, what might have been going on in her head. Like, did God really say, is, is he holding out on you? So, uh, you know, what kind of emotional state do you think she could have been in at this point? What might have been going through her head? Well, let's look at the way that Satan, uh, that, that the serpent, excuse me, I keep throwing Satan out there, and, and we threw some questions out in our last story about the serpent representing something more than just a reptile. But in this story, it's a serpent, right? Uh, but the serpent calls into question God's goodness. Did God really say? And then he said, you won't surely die. So if... if if God said you would surely die, and now the serpent's saying you won't surely die, what is, what is he inferring about God? Yeah, that, that God's lying to the man and the woman? Hmm. And, and, and then he says, and he says, God knows the day you eat of that fruit, you're going to be like God. So what is the inference there? What, what is he insinuating uh, about God? from his question there. Like, hey, God's holding out on you. God doesn't want you to be like him. Hmm. You know, I'm, I'm thinking if I do this story, uh, when I do this story again, I, I may want to bring up the fact of uh, Satan's rebellion in heaven that he wanted to be like God, according to, to Isaiah. But uh, 
just a just a thought for those of you who are who are kind of learning some storing. That just in in my head, that's what I would uh, probably bring out in the introduction. But since we didn't do that, I want to stay right here. His inference that God is holding out uh, is is he questioning the goodness of God? I, is it like? <sighs> Is, is it like he's questioning the love of God? You know, if God really loved you, he'd want you to be like him. Hmm. And, and then, let's look at the woman. So, the serpent calls into question God's goodness. And then the woman does three things. She sees that the fruit is good to eat. Uh, she sees that it's pleasant to the eyes. And she sees that it's desirable to make one wise. So what do we learn about the senses she's using here? Do we, do we learn anything at all? I mean, do, does she stop and, and pray, or does she repeat what God said? But rather, she's, she's using what she sees, what makes sense to her. Think of that word, makes sense. It, uh, she's using her senses. And so what her senses are telling her is right, is good, is pleasant. That's, that's, what, she's, that's what she's following after. I mean, to, today, is, is that what people still do? They make decisions based on their senses, what seems right, what looks right, what sounds right? Hmm. I mean, in, in what ways do people still do that today? I, can, can you think of ways that maybe you or somebody you know has made a decision that uh, it, it seemed right when you thought about it from a logical perspective, from a physical perspective, but, but even inwardly you, you had this tug going on inside like, eh, I know that's not what I need to be doing, but... Uh, you know, my wife and I built a house one time, and uh, and and we knew in inside inwardly we had this the the way we were doing the financing, going into debt uh, in in a in a different way than just a loan with a bank. We were like, uh, something something's off here, but it just made sense, right? And, and it ended up being just a terrible decision. Uh, that, uh, that we had to deal with the, the aftermath of that for quite a while. And, and I found that a lot of times, in my life anyway, if I make decisions based on the flesh, based simply on what makes sense, uh, there's, there's spiritual repercussions to that. I would love to hear from you about some of the things that, that you've seen in your own life when you've made fleshly decisions, or maybe even ways that you have... Uh, set up warnings for yourself so that you didn't fall into those things. Uh, I'd love to have you write some things down there in the comments, but also would invite you to subscribe to the channel. Little bit by little bit, we're trying to build it up. We're uh, trying to get some different places, and, uh, and we're, right now we're going to be going all the way through Genesis chapter 3. Uh, which is what this story, where this story came from, Genesis chapter 3. We're right now doing the first eight verses. So I would challenge you to go to this passage, look it through, and if you discover something there that we haven't talked about, please let us know. But until the next time, keep on telling those Bible stories.